last year or so, you both have been developing something unique, something disruptive and exciting. Katie's is finally here. How does it feel? A lot of work's been put into the business. Um, we've been talking about it for almost two years, I think. But I think also a lot of pressure. A lot of sort of um, people will expect a lot from us. You know, we've, yeah. we've both launched businesses before. Um, to many, those seem quite successful. And I think the, uh, the bars are higher now. You know, the levels and expectations are there. And we take uh, nothing for granted. We're excited for sure. It's been a journey and it's not even started yet. So why go back to Europe? Why go back to start and start to build a new brand here? I think it's the excitement. And like I said earlier, it's about us already having the backing of our teams and the resource that we've built over the past decade between us. Um, starting something new with that behind us is it's exciting and it feels great to like go back down to literally zero. I'm sure you feel the same. Yeah, it's a scrappiness. I love that. I think that sort of no plan B approach, um, you know, waking up in the morning now with a new brand, new business, doing things that, you know, we haven't done for a while, but we did it in the beginning. You know, like the garage, parents' bedroom stories where you used to just do everything between you and your co-founder or you and your brother, yeah. for example. Like it's kind of almost back to that, but a bit more different, I suppose. But I think it's that zero to one phase that I love. Even sitting between each other on a laptop at 4 a.m. on calls, it like feels so exciting, but so, and so new to us, even though it's something that we've done in the past. Tell us a bit about this brand. What is Cadence? How did it come about and how has it been so far? Yeah, I think you know, naturally it came about because I was consuming electrolytes myself, you know, especially through, you know, my training has changed over the last few years, more traditionally bodybuilding, now more, you know, high rocks, longer runs, etc. So the necessity for sodium and salt uh, has, you know, increased over the last few years, specifically around my training schedule. I think as you sort of scan the market and look for products that you want to consume, often gaps appear. And I think that's what I found. Nothing looked like Cadence, nothing tasted like Cadence, nothing had the quality of Cadence. And I think, you know, what George has done with his brand is often just elevated things that he can't find in his day-to-day -day wardrobe, for example. And I think that's what we felt. We both enjoyed different products on the market, but there was really nothing like this. And I think we scratched that itch, um, specifically with our first product when it's a ready to drink. You know, there was nothing like that, not at these levels of sodium. Yeah, and for me, it's like, I love bringing that elevated fashion aspect into everything I do in my life. And the way I can put that out to a consumer, if we can do that through other products and through things that we, we use every single day, like it's part of our life, why wouldn't we want to do that? Like everything I want to post is something that I want to make. And Ross is in that same mindset. And for us to be able to create something that's not actually already on the market in the space that's growing rapidly is like so exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I think we're doing something truly unique, truly differentiated in the category and it has a lot of scale. It can be scaled um, if, we, if we desire that. When you, when you first decided to start training, you dedicated so much time to intend to train. How did it start impacting you as a founder of business? Honestly, like at the start, it, it was hard. It was difficult. I would wake up, I would train, I would be in the office and I would be asleep. I would have headaches and I'd like 11 a.m. would be in meetings and I'd be my head would be on the, on the table. So it was like, how do I find different things and different ways that would help me be able to maintain my energy through the day or even increase my energy through the day after training at such high intensity. And as my training got better, and as I started researching into what things would work, electrolytes was the main, the main key. There was days where I would try electrolytes and nothing else, and then days I would be, have much more energy through the day. So putting that into, the, into my system pre during and post workouts, that was like the key to me for being able to, to like maintain energy throughout the day. Yeah, I mean, we've been told for so long, like drink water, you know, like drink X amount of water or, you know, whatever it may be. And I think we've realized that water is actually not enough. We say that as a brand. Um, and for a long time, electrolytes were sort of deemed to be these sort of high sugar replacement drinks when you were sick. So salt as an ingredient, as a commodity has been so poorly looked upon. I mean, like the concept of increasing salt and adding salt to your drink seems so obscure, but I think um, we're trying to, you know, really disrupt that and really educate consumers. Actually, you know, you do need to consume salt. With the first thing you wake up in the morning before your caffeine, pre-training, during training, post-training. And I think 
you know, we'll start to see that grow and hopefully it's through the, the impact Cadence can have on not only athletes, not only people running the marathon, but like every right. single person, yeah. medical worker, a nurse, a doctor, a teacher, whatever it may be. And I've even seen that happen with my parents. Like even my mom just implementing electrolytes into her life is, it, it, you, you see the difference and they know the difference themselves. But for us, it's like, if we can put that out there and educate about it, because not many people know about this kind of stuff. And it's like, it seems so alien to a lot of people, which every single day people ask me like, why, why are you talking about salt? Why is salt on your story? Why is this, why is that? And it's like, this market is so untapped, but it's such like a real thing that can actually help every single person that, that drinks it. So if we can be that person of, of spokes, should I say, then we'll do that. That'll be the brand. It's funny because when we sit and we talk about cadence, rarely do we talk about the business scale and the opportunity. And traditionally, when you're building a business, you should look at the category and the size of the category and how big year one, two, three, five, ten can be. This is genuinely two people, I think, with a genuine respect for each other that have both developed a love for building brands and businesses and implementing products in consumers' lives. Like we wake up, we train together, we run together, we compete together. And I think what George said was like, it, it is just that at the beginning. It's like people ask George or, or myself, for example, like what salt do you take? What do you eat? And why not bring people on this journey with you? If we've seen the benefit, let us entice you and also optimize your life through your own journey. So it's about us finding these little hacks and these little growth moments for us and being able to put that to our consumer. If it can help everyone else, why not? Yeah. And that product there that we've developed over the past like 18 months it's it's completely new it's not just another sachet that's on the market that's got sugar in it or tastes like a fizzy drink like this is something that's just pure hydration like and the best form of it yeah i think it stems from again our personal journeys through both fitness um and building a business you know i think when i started paying attention to my health my business grew i think you were the same exactly the same like you know how you feel how you look, how you wake up, how you move, everything is a direct correlation between the outcome of your, your, your business, I believe. Um, the glorification of like no sleep, eating bad food, but having a big fat bank account is gone. You know, Don't get me wrong, those things are goals. They could be goals to anyone listening to this, but not at the expense of your health. Uh, and I think if you can combine those two and create the intersection of both successful companies, successful bodies, um, you know, I think that's, that's the future and I think that's the new influencer, that's the new sort of person I would look up to. Someone able to build a great brand, touch a lot of people at scale, but also be fit, running marathons, doing high rocks, whatever it may be, just looking after the body and I think... Um, yeah, it's duality, it's the yeah. yin and yang, it's being able to do both things. I think that's what really like excites people who look up to it. It's like if, if this guy who's running a business, having a family, and still competing at a, an athletic level. Like that's so interesting because usually you're one pillar, one dimension. You've not got all these different dynamics going on in your life. So like seeing, seeing people come up and do this kind of thing makes you realize that you can do it too. How do you reflect this mission of building a life that you find in not just the I saw it come about with like what I did with 247 and that opened my mind and everyone in my business to realize that like, okay, we're not just a fashion brand. We can go into active wear, we can go into training plans, we can go into routines, we can go into supplements. Like that there gave me the realization, the open mind to see that Represent can be this umbrella that holds a lot of other things underneath it. And they can be brands under the name Represent or they can be brands outside of the name of Represent. And if we can build them under the same fundamentals and the structure that we've built the brand in, then I wanna do that with the right people. And look, I've had a million opportunities to do other brands all, all the time where we get that shit. But like I met Ross a couple of years ago and the way we bonded and connected and the way we are and how we are with each other day to day and like what we do together and how we train together, like we're like the same person. So I was like, okay, this is the right thing to do. When He's he faster than me though. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> when he approached me to do something in this space, which is something I was so passionate about, I was like, this has to be the right, the right angle to take it. Yeah, I think um, a couple of things, and I think it's the tenacity and the like determination of just, you know, nothing but winning. I don't believe that second place is the best. 
I believe in first place, often people will say, you know, it's okay to be number two or three in the category. I think George shares the value that it's like, kill or be killed. Uh, and it might sound extreme, and it is extreme to some extent, but I think when we go for a workout together, like we're competitive and being able to bounce off each other in that element and seeing someone who also wants to win fairly, but also like wants to win. And that's important in business. Like, you know, especially when you're risking a lot of, you know, upside and financial investment and time, um, you gotta win, you know, that's, that's important. We've built businesses as well, like on opposite sides. Like my business is all D2C, so I'm learning from Ross, Ross is learning from me. We're kind of bringing two worlds together to create something that can also go into both of those worlds. And although it'll start as D2C, we'll, we'll obviously trickle it out over the future when we work. Yeah, channel, we'll see that channel expansion. growth. I think on that, I think it's just that pulse on the culture, um, the pill effect. For me, a lot of my past has been like selling the product. Hey, Walmart, hey, Whole Foods, hey, Air One, hey, Starbucks, buy my product, here's the reason why. Where George has been able to build this sort of zeitgeist on the culture of like, this is how I move and people follow. So I think when you look at any business, you look at the holes, you look at the opportunities, you look what plates you want to spin yourself. And I think we, and I think you've had this experience before, is like we don't really overlap in a massive element. I'm very focused on you know, several things that will move the ball forward. And George is also focused on other things that are going to move the ball forward. And there's a lot of respect there. Um, no ego and no interest in sort of participating in what each of us are, are best at. Like there's nothing other than just, I think, two people who love the space, who love building, and just want to build something together. So you both have built successful companies and have experiences in the arena. What are some of the lessons you're bringing with you into this new business? Um, I think we've actually learned a few on the way, especially with like IP. Um, and there's been, there's been a few hiccups, even pre-launch, that we've had on this brand that we have learned things from in our old, older brands. and. Um, like carrying those mishaps and those, I guess, trials and tribulations forward will help us really scale this thing at a level way faster than what we have done in the past. Like Represent took nearly 10 years to even grow to a level worth talking about. Um, but through all them years of like learning different, different paths and different projects within the business, we kind of have a little bit of a foot in the door of knowing what we want to do and where we want to go with it. So that definitely helps. Yeah, and I think just the, the two of us are set up here, but in the background, there's like a full team building, running, helping to scale this thing, get it off the ground. You know, it's not George and I alone. There's a bunch of individuals with um, a joint mission and passion behind what we're building that are also helping. So I think that importance of team, in the beginning, you try and do everything yourself. You also probably have to do everything yourself because you don't have the capabilities to hire people you haven't launched, you haven't sold, there's no, there's no revenue streaming through the company. But in the background today, there is this engine that we have in place between all of the team um, to really sort of catapult this business. So I think just the importance of team, you know, yeah. stays I think super that, true. That's what's excited me the most about it, that we've got like a base behind us that we can be doing what we're great at and they can be doing what they're great at and we can bring that all together and really push this thing when it first launches. Whereas like Ross said, when we first started our brands and it was one or two people yeah. and you're running around doing customer support and shipping and logistics and manufacturing and then design and all that thing, like we've got them fundamentals nailed with this one. So it's like straight off, here we go, first product, then we'll go faster and faster as we go. Yeah, I mean, we were sitting in George's home here in LA and it was a completely different product that we were going to launch with. Um, the mission and the umbrella stayed the same, but I think the concept of a ready to drink electrolyte seems almost impossible because during testing, um, what we wanted to achieve, and we weren't willing to settle for anything less than, you know, what it is today. So like the low dosage electrolyte drink, it doesn't excite us. It's not something we wanted to put out to our consumers or the market. Yeah, in a big plastic bottle. Yeah, it just didn't make, make sense for us. Yeah, and we, we wanted something new, something exciting on the market. We don't want to go out and do the same as what everyone else is doing right now. Yeah. Like that's, mean that's not what we do both between us, that's not what we do. So we had to come up with a way that this would happen. And eventually that just struck and it became apparent what it was. This was just like, let's launch a drink and here it is today. But from the name to the product to just coming together, we've had to be super nimble. And I think whatever your plan is on day one, just be willing for it to be changed. Like if anyone here wants to start a business, launch a company, 
just the ability to just say like, oh, that door's closed, onto the next one. Like it is something super important. And this company has changed a lot over the last year and a half. For, um, even from IP to design, to factories, to go and visit in the factories, to then testing product, to then sodium levels affecting your product, to like every single thing down to the last detail of the website ready for the launch like there's so much that goes behind it and even us as business founders that had been in this for years and years we were naive going into this and that's why it's taken so long i guess yeah but we're ready now what is the ultimate vision for cadence i'll i'll answer briefly i think for me it's not finite at all um i think that's what excites me is we don't fully know yet um i like scale i like to you know, put products in a lot of stores. I like to grow businesses. I love hyperscale, but this one's a little bit different. You know, I'm learning from George and the team about that sort of demand um, impact, that sort of sold out approach. It's a little bit different and I'm excited about that. The goal for us is um, to create a successful company and build a great business. And, and I also don't think there is a ceiling on it. Like yeah. I, a few years ago, I thought there was a ceiling on what my brand was. And I didn't think I could go into different categories because it was outside the realm of fashion. But like, once you start doing those things and you realize there's different areas that you can grow in and like, you can still bring that same consumer into them areas if you educate them or you inspire them. This is just another one of those. And if this thing ends up being a huge supplement company or it ends up staying just salt and it stays niche and it carries on educating people on this one ingredient, then we're, we're happy either way, right? And we don't know where it's gonna go. I don't like to plan anywhere more than a year in advance anyway. What is this first product? First product is our citrus flavor. Um, zero calorie electrolyte hydration. Uh, and it's jam packed full of ingredients, 500 milligrams of sodium in a can, which seems a lot, but it's what we've seen to be the optimal amount um, for our lives, but also what we think is for everyone should have. You know, first thing in the morning when you wake up, before training, during training, post training, whatever it may be, uh, a lot of products are very low in sodium and we've jam packed this to be really beneficial. No one's done this yet. The amount of time and resource that's been put into making a can that's got such a high sodium level is really difficult and it's something that's not been done and I guess that's why. Originally we just thought we could just dump a load of salt in a can and it'd be fine, but it's not and it requires a lot of testing and a lot of different, different elements into it to put it into this thing, but we're here now so we're ready to go with it. Ross has got a lot of time to put behind this and I'm coming behind this with my team already. Like I'm bringing my represent team into this business because for me, like to get to a certain place, I need them guys that are behind me. Um, so being able to do this with Ross, but also knowing we've got the backing of that engine of what Represent is, is like, it's, it's calming as well as it is exciting for everyone involved with it. And just being able to bring people into things like, and I know that's with you with your last business, like, you, like that's, that's the fun of it. You realize it's not about you, it's about the team that's involved. And with Represent, like I never documented the first 10 years of it. Like we took a load of clips and made a little documentary after 10 years and realized that what people want to see is really the start. They want to see that zero to one, right? They don't want to see the 10 to 100 because that there is easier than getting from zero to one. So what we're doing here is really documenting every single aspect and detail that goes into this and both from Ross's aspect, from my aspect, and we'll put that all together and kind of use that as an educational piece as, long, as well as what the actual product is in terms of education, isn't it? So that's why we're here today. You know, that zero to one phase, um, a lot of people are asking questions like how to, how to, how to, and I think part of our job is to try and educate and try and, you know, bring people on that journey. The zero to one phase that you talked about is the hardest. It's where most people stop. It's where most people trip up. And getting to level two to 10, you start to feel that momentum. But there's days where zero to one just feel impossible. So. You know, the fact that we're here, we're going to document it, we're going to bring it on the channels, we're going to try and inspire people to get up in the morning and see what lights them up, because this is why we get excited to build stuff. And we're super excited to launch the brand.